Our lead story, well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, power-packed visit to France and Indo-French cooperation on defence was really the focus of the Prime Minister's visit. An agreement of visas was also inked and Prime Minister Narendra Modi significantly said that we see France as a natural partner. President Macron, meanwhile, said we've decided to work together in many sectors. What were the key deals that were really signed? Well, uh, technology transfer and defence cooperation really were some of the key areas as far as the Prime Minister's visit is concerned. And also co-development and cooperation and finding new ways of cooperation was something that was the focus. Supporting a joint development of combat aircraft engine and construction of three additional submarines uh, were also uh, part of the outcome document and also the reform of the UNSC including expanding membership uh, for various other countries and also civil nuclear cooperation. In this एक नेचुरल पार्टनर के रूप में देखते हैं दो दिनों में हमें आपसी सहयोग के सभी क्षेत्रों पर विस्तार से बात करने का अवसर मिल रहा है आर्थिक संबंधों को और सुदूर करना हमारी साझा प्राथमिकता है रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस सेमीकंडक्टर्स साइबर डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी जैसे अनेक क्षेत्रों में सहयोग बढ़ाने के लिए हम नए इनिशिएटिव्स की पहचान कर रहे हैं भारत के यूपीआई यानी यूनिफाइड पेमेंट्स इंटरफेस को फ्रांस में लॉन्च करने पर समझौता हुआ है कोविड महामारी और यूक्रेन संघर्ष के प्रभाव पूरे विश्व पर पड़े हैं ग्लोबल साउथ के देशों पर इनका विशेष रूप से नकारात्मक प्रभाव पड़ा है यह चिंता का विषय है इन समस्याओं के समाधान के लिए सभी देशों का एकजुट होकर प्रयास करना आवश्यक है हमारा मानना है कि सभी विवादों का समाधान डायलॉग और डिप्लोमेसी के माध्यम से होना चाहिए माय सेंसेस दिस इज फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट इंडिया हैज चॉक्ड आउट a horizon 2047 framework of partnership with any country in the world uh, which india and france today included uh, i think the document uh, should be out if not out it would be put out uh, shortly uh, for you to peruse yourself and see uh, uh, what it contains in terms of uh, uh, not just uh, aspirations that the two countries think that the relationship can touch, uh, but also has very specific substance to it, which this relationship will be filled with. And well, the big highlight today was uh, the Bastille Day Parade, where we saw Sare Jahan Se Acha Echo in the Champs Elysees. Well, the Prime Minister and President Macron were part of the Bastille Day celebrations, the Bastille Day Parade, France's National Day. Take a look at this report. <laughs> Indian Army, Air Force and Navy soldiers marching down the Champs Elysees, reviving an abiding link between India and France, an association that may be forgotten in India but never in this country. On Bastille Day, France's National Day, India was the guest of honour with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the chief guest as both nations celebrate 25 years of strategic ties. And our Air Force's Rafale fighters flew overhead. In the run-up to the much-awaited moment, the josh was high. As you can see, they are hard at it, getting ready, and it is quite a show over here. They are by far and away the most impressive of all the marching contingents that we've seen. We've got the Indian Air Force as well, who are equally uh, impressive over there, but they are getting absolutely ready for what's going to be an absolutely 
फैंटेस्टिक परेड अभी जो प्रैक्टिस के बाद हम मार्च के लिए तैयार है और मेरी रेजिमेंट बिल्कुल तैयार है मार्च करने के लिए और जोश पूरा हाई है At the end of the event, France's President Macron and Prime Minister Modi met the officers commanding the Indian marching contingent. France's National Day or Bastille Day occupies a special place in French consciousness. This day commemorates the storming of the Bastille prison in 1789 during the French Revolution. 74,000 Indian soldiers were killed in action in the First World War, many fighting in France and Western Europe. Indian soldiers returned to fight in the Second World War, a massive contribution against a global enemy, Nazi fascism. The historic significance of Indian soldiers marching down the Champs Elysees may be lost to many in India, but here in France, many of these soldiers and their regiments they're all considered heroes. Indian soldiers fought and were killed in action in the First and Second World Wars over here in Western Europe. And to see Indian soldiers march down the Champs Elysees, the same regiments which participated more than a hundred years back, was indeed an incredible sight. With Pooja Arya, this is Vishnu Show for India TV. So, well, a crucial moment in Indo-French cooperation, a crucial moment diplomatically, but also as far as soft diplomacy is concerned, the Prime Minister's gift diplomacy continued, continued and also the Prime Minister's selfie with French President Emmanuel Macron. So, all of it part of PM Modi's diplomacy in France. And moving now to the other big story, well, ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 mission launched today from Sri Harikota and it was a textbook takeoff, a majestic one really. The lander will now take nearly 42 days to complete its journey to the moon, where it aims to achieve a soft landing of the lander Vikram on the moon's southern side. Well, if ISRO pulls this mission off successfully, India will join an exclusive list of just three other countries that have managed a soft landing on the moon. And well, these are the United States, the erstwhile Soviet Union, and also most recently, China. Mission Director hereby authorizes for the launch operation sequence. Real time programs activated. Here we have a majestic liftoff of LVM-3M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. A textbook liftoff as LVM-3M4, India's largest satellite vehicle, put Chandrayaan-3, India's third exploration mission, into the orbit on the 16th minute after blasting off from Sri Harikota. 200 stages are separated. The Chandrayaan-3 mission aims to achieve a soft landing of the lander Vikram on the moon's southern side. So, the rover Pragyan could explore the moon's surface for key information on human habitable features, minerals, besides other geological and seismological features. The launch has also added a feather in the cap of LVM-3 rocket. Congratulations, India. Chandrayaan-3 has started its journey towards moon. Our dear LVM-3 has already put Chandrayaan-3 craft into the precise orbit around Earth. 170 by 36,500 kilometers was its intended target orbit, and it is precisely there now. And let us wish all the best for the Chandrayaan-3 craft to make its further orbit racing maneuvers and travel towards moon in the coming days. So let me wish all the very best to Chandrayaan-3 for its further journey towards moon. It is indeed a moment of glory for India and a moment of destiny for all of us over here at Siri Hari Kota who are a part of the history in making. You would recall Honorable Prime Minister had very recently said, sky is not the limit. And living by his words, I think the Chandrayaan today has gone beyond the limits of sky to discover the unexplored horizons of the universe beyond. In 2019, Chandrayaan 2 that attempted the same succeeded only partially as it crash landed on the moon's surface.
The orbiter though sent crucial details. With lessons learned, more than a thousand people, including hundreds of scientists, including mission director Mohan Kumar and Satish Dhawan Space Center's director Raja Rajan, slogged for four years. The lander was made stronger and put to rigorous tests with the rover. The software was made more robust and new algorithm added to handle all possible challenges in landing. There was collaboration from various domain experts to achieve a soft landing. What I am very happy is LVM3 has now become a very successful 100% certified vehicle so that it can, a lot of launches have happened after the Chandrayaan 2. So LVM3 has a very good success, 100% successful rate. So it gives a lot of confidence to go to its Gaganyan mission. India now waits for 23rd August when Chandrayaan 3 is slated to make land on the lunar surface after a 42-day journey. If everything goes well, the moon landing will happen around the last week of August. Scientists are confident that they would make it this time. A successful mission would put India on a global league of a few big countries. Only America, Russia and China have achieved this so far. At the Satish Dhawan Space Centre at Sri Harikota, with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. So, well, what a majestic lift off there. And as the Prime Minister said, a new chapter in India's space odyssey. But moving now to our other big focus, well, the flood situation in the national capital. This morning, we saw the busy ITO crossing was completely flooded. Water from the Yamuna entered the ITO crossing. Now, the waters of the Yamuna are finally receding, but only marginally so. Um, the Yamuna water level still continues to be several metres above the danger mark. And now Delhi is staring at a water crisis as well, a drinking water crisis as a humanitarian crisis unfolds in several parts of the national capital. Tragic news coming in as well. Three boys died today in northeast Delhi while trying to swim in flood waters. Remember, the water in the northeast uh, part of Delhi is almost 20 to 25 feet deep. The victims uh, were, 20, uh, were 10 year old and also two 13 year olds. They dived into flood waters in a ditch where they drowned. Meanwhile, thousands of peoples have now, uh, people have now been rendered homeless. Many are left without water supply. NDTV has been on ground zero, bringing you various stories from this unprecedented floods in the capital. The memorial of the father of the nation is surrounded by waste deep water and in fact, water even going higher as we go towards the Rajghat. If I didn't tell you that I'm standing at the Rajghat, you would probably think that this is a flood plain of the national capital. Some of the areas which have been flooded after the Yamuna River reached an all-time high yesterday. But this is the Rajghat, which is an iconic and a crucial location for the national capital. As I said, it's the memorial of the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. But right now, even the name of the Rajghat is not visible. The beige-colored plate you're seeing, the stone that you're seeing, the beige-colored stone, that used to have the name written Rajghat in black color. You can't see that at all now. It's completely underwater. Of course, you can see Mahatma Gandhi's name, but you can't see that this is the Rajghat. And the situation here has turned upside down in just a matter of one night. Till yesterday evening, there was no water here. Where I'm standing, this entire area was completely dry. But it's after 3 a.m., early this morning, uh, late last night. That's when the water started increasing here. Now remember, let me also tell you my own experience. Because of these electric poles here, which you can see, uh, these street lights and of course wires hanging loose as well. Because of these electric poles and wires hanging loose, there was also electric shock that was being witnessed. In fact, when I entered the water, I myself felt an uh, you know, electric shock and then I came out of the water and after that for around half an hour or so, people were trying to fix it and then power supply was cut totally. So these electric poles, you know, power supply to these electric poles were, uh, were you know, was, was cut completely. You were here? Yes. Okay. So, what 
चार बज गया था इतना इतना पानी में हेल के निकाले हैं आपके गले तक पानी था हाँ। अच्छा तो क्या सब डूब गया है क्या आप कुछ सामान बचा के ला पाए या सब डूब गया नहीं वो सब बहुत तो ऐसे ही चला गया पानी सामान तो मतलब दो दिन में एक तरह से आपकी लाइफ आपकी जिंदगी पूरी उथल पुथल बहुत ज्यादा क्या करे दो दिन में ही सब बदल गया दुष्यंत कुमार की दो पंक्तियाँ हैं मेले में भटके होते तो कोई घर पहुंचा जाता हम तो घर में भटके हैं कैसे ठोर ठिकाने आएंगे कमोबेश यही स्थिति दिल्ली में अलग अलग जगहों की है जहां पे बैरिकेडिंग आपका इंतजार कर रही होती है लोग आ रहे होते हैं और उनको रास्ता बदल कर जाना होता है और कहीं पर ट्रैफिक पुलिस वाले हैं यहाँ पर तो वो आपको रास्ता बता रहे हैं कि कैसे आप अपने घर पहुँचेंगे या गंतव्य स्थान पर पहुँचेंगे ये दरअसल सिग्नेचर ब्रिज का इलाका है जहाँ पर सिग्नेचर ब्रिज से अगर आप मजनू का टीला जाना चाहेंगे तो ये रास्ता जो है वो बैरिकेडिंग कर दी गई है बंद कर दिया गया है इसको इस पर बैरिकेडिंग है यहाँ से आप नहीं गुजर सकते जगह जगह पर इस तरीके से आपको आ, लोग तैनात नज़र आएंगे अपने काम पर नज़र आएंगे क्योंकि अभी बहुत ज़रूरत ज़्यादा है मुश्किल घड़ी है और इस घड़ी से कब उबरेंगे फिलहाल पता नहीं So well, we'll continue to track that big story developing in the national capital. Time for a short break now. News and updates on the other side. Welcome back. News coming in from Maharashtra. Maharashtra has approved the Adani Group's bid for the redevelopment of uh, Dharavi, which is one of Asia's largest slums. taking the project to a step closer to reality after delays of more than two decades the state has issued um, the government resolution awarding the project to adani this is what uh, svr shrinivas the chief executive of dharavi rehabilitation scheme said well the letter of the award will be issued soon is what he had to say the project expected to cost around uh, 23 crore rupees will be one of the largest redevelopments by a government agency in india through global tendering it will require the rehabilitation of existing tenants as well Moving to more news now as tomatoes have disappeared from most household menus in recent days with soaring prices across states in India now the central government has started the sale of tomatoes at discounted rates of rupees 90 per kilogram at various centers in the national capital earlier the department of consumer affairs had notified this is sale of uh, freshly procured tomatoes from Andhra Pradesh Karnataka and Maharashtra will begin today at the major consumption centers himanshu shekhar has this report abhi kis rate par uh, at what rate are you selling the tomatoes now at the nccf outlet we are selling the tomatoes at 90 rupees kg hmm. 90 rupees kg 90 rupees kg and uh, as you are aware if you see that the retail it's being sold at anywhere between 200 to 250 rupees hmm. so I, it's almost one third of the price which which we are selling it at we're selling it now yes. right and so any ceiling as to how much a person can buy they we have put the ceiling at 2 uh, 2 kg per person so that we are able to provide tomatoes to maximum beneficiaries maximum beneficiaries sir and what is the quantum of tomato you are selling on day 1 actually today we have an intake of 17000 uh, kgs tomorrow it's going to be 23000 and day after 40000 just for delhi delhi and just for delhi yes so how long you plan to continue the operation because there is still time for the fresh stocks to actually reach the market we are expecting it to continue at least um, we will we have not fixed a deadline as of now but we expect it to continue for certain few more at least a week or 10 days at least and how many cities you are selling the subsidized to my we have been asked to sell in three states mm. delhi rajasthan and up and rajasthan and up we are going to start from saturday aapke ilake mein tomato ki 200 rupaye kilo hai ye jankari aapko kahan se mili ki yahan sasta log leke ja rahe hain kisi ne bataya mujhe to main aa gaya okay to aapke ilake mein tomato kis rate pe bik raha hai 300 se leke 350 tak 300 किस इलाके में रहते हैं द्वारका मोड द्वारका द्वारका मोड भी सरकार के लिए भी धन्यवाद जो कि पब्लिक के लिए ऐसा काम कर रहे जो इस महंगाई में उनका थोड़ा सा रिलीफ मिल रिलीफ मिलेगा मिलेगा आपके इलाके में अभी क्या रेट है हमारे इलाके में 200 रुपए किलो है 200 रुपए आप कहां रहते हैं हम रहते हैं बदरपुर के पास आपके इलाके में क्या रेट है टमाटर सर 200 रुपए किलो 200 रुपए किलो कौन दिया आपके इलाके में वहां भी 200 है जी 
So, some relief there as uh, prices of tomatoes continue to soar. But we leave you with visuals of Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the iconic Louvre Museum to attend uh, a banquet dinner. This is the Prime Minister's last engagement in his power-packed visit to France. And his next stop is UAE. So, the Prime Minister there on a diplomatic role.